Welcome back to Math Type Lesson 6, which is learning how to format all the equations in a document and learning how to make special tabs to use in Math Type. So, what we're going to do is a very useful skill to have. Let's say you've created a lovely worksheet like the one you see on the screen right now, and you print it and you realize that really all the equations are just too small to read. Maybe you put them in a 10 point font or they just don't look big enough and you want them to be bigger. Well, one option is to open every single equation by double clicking on it and changing the size of every one separately. But that would really be a pain and we have an easier way to do that. So the trick here is that in order to format all of these equations on this page, we need to change the formatting of one equation and tell MathType that's what we want to use from now on. You can always change that, so it really doesn't matter, and it's really easy to do. It's the same way we'd change the size normally. We'd highlight the text, we would go up to Size, Define, change the text to some other size. So for example, let's say we decide it needs to be 20-point um, font instead on this worksheet and simply don't uncheck this window. The one that says use for new equations, we want math type to default to that the next time we tell it to do something. So we want it to default to everything that's set on this equation now except we want it to be 20 point font. And so we click apply or OK and go ahead and close that. And you'll see that equation is now bigger than all of the rest. Well, let's say I just want um, these four equations to be bigger and not the rest of the equations for some reason. Whether I want the whole equation, or the whole worksheet to change or whether I want just these four to change, I do the same process and just change one thing I click on. So let's just say I want these four to change. What I do is I go up, remember I have already changed it for one equation. So I go up to the top of the page and we have never actually used that button before. This is in Word and there is a math type menu to choose. So I'm going to choose that math type menu and there's actually a ton of stuff in here that I've never used actually. But one of the options you get is format equations and that's exactly what I want to do. So I want to format those equations and I want to just use the current selection. If I wanted the whole document, I would of course click on whole document. If I leave current selection clicked, I hit OK. Give it a second to churn through that. And what you'll see is that those four math type equation objects were changed. And so now five of the equations are bigger than the rest. And now I think, OK, well, that was just silly. I didn't mean to do that. So I want the rest of the document to change. I just go back to math type, format equations, whole document now, that's the default if you don't have anything highlighted, and click OK. And what you're going to see now is the entire document switched to a 20 point font, which is real convenient if you need to switch out a whole thing at once. Notice that the text in the document didn't change. That's because equations and texts are two different types of things. If I want the equation to, or the text to change to 20 point font, this is outside of the equations, I would need to highlight that and actually change the the font size of that. And now the whole equation, well, I've got to do this too, I suppose, now that it looks silly. Um, now that's done as well. Some other little tricks of the trade here. Um, let's say that you get all this done and you print it and you just hate it and you want to undo that. There is a standard undo command in all Microsoft products, which is Control Z. It's real helpful to know it. As long as you haven't closed this document, as long as it's been open the whole time you're working on it, I can type Control Z the first time it undoes the top formatting. I can type Control Z again, and now it undoes that um, text change I made. Control Z again will start to undo the equations one by one. Every time I press it, I get it to do it. So unfortunately, the formatting here um, doesn't quite catch the same way as the others. Um, because when it formatted the whole document, it did it as, um, math type did it as like 12 different actions. But if I keep doing it, you'll find you can click through these pretty quickly and you can get back to where you were. Okay. Another option would of course be to have saved it as one version and saved it as another version. But you can get back to where you were pretty easily. Um, the other thing you can do if I wanted to get back to my size, right now if I open up a new equation, type some stuff and close it, it's still in that font that's too big. So just watch out for that. I do need to change this slurk by highlighting it, going back to size, defining the size to be smaller again, 12 point font, hitting 
I do want to use it for new equations, so make sure that that gets checked and then hitting OK. Kind of a standard default size for any kind of worksheets is a 12-point font. Um, you will see sometimes in text point in textbooks a default 10-point font, but 10 is actually pretty hard to read on a test or something. Okay, so one last thing I want to show you about math type, and then I would consider you to be an expert user here. If you haven't tried using it already, there are these buttons down here you can choose from. Right now we're in the Algebra tab, and you have, for example, a nice limit, and you have um, the discriminant part of the quadratic equation, and you have the quadratic equation, and some factorial stuff. And if I click on any of these, it actually just shows up and I can change it. So I can edit this and put in some values um, for these. So if you hate having to remember these or find all the keystrokes, you can put them in as you go. Okay. There are other tabs here, so this is the derivatives tab, all sorts of stuff for calculus, the statistics tab, also sorts of stuff for statistics, that is a tongue twister. Matrices stuff here, sets stuff, trig stuff, this is all just standard, it comes with math type, geometry, and then there are tab 8 and tab 9, and you can make those whatever you want. Now if you click if you right click on tab 8 and tab 9, you can go to properties and change the title to whatever the heck you want it to be. You can actually do that for any of these tabs. But one of the nice things to do here is you can create buttons for things you use all the time. So for example, if I'm going to use the distance formula all the time. So here's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1. I can make that formula, highlight the whole thing with my mouse, and then click on it and hold it down as you drag it up to this tab. And you can put it anywhere on the tab you want. It'll automatically default to the left. It's a little bit hard to read, but I know what it is. And now, whenever I want a distance formula, I can just click there, and the distance formula appears and I can replace the values then if I want, which is real nice. So that's a, a helpful little thing. The other thing I might use this for is if I'm teaching chemistry and I want to have certain ion groups or something that I use all the time, um, one of the things that's tricky here is that um, as you type, for example, sulfate, S-O, subscript 4. You, you don't want these two things italicized, so you have to go back and highlight them and tell the program you don't want math style, you want text style for that. And then I can put in my 2 minus up on the top, um, and I have a sulfate ion. And if I'm going to use that all the time, I can highlight it and drag it into one of these menus and call it, for example, my ions menu or something like that. You can also put it here in the miniature menu. If you can read that okay and figure out which is which, you can use that one as well. So these are just, it's, it's just a customizable button menu and you can put anything you want on there and then keep using it. There is actually a way to make hotkeys from those as well. Um, so if you wanted to type control S and have the sulfate ion appear, I can show you how to make a hotkey for that. It's fairly complex. I don't want to do it here, but there is a way to do it. Um, so I think that's about it. You should just know there's other options for you to do things um, in math type. There are some styles we never talked about. You can actually define a handwriting style if you want to have equations that um, are in a, like a student's handwriting, for example, to show like work for something. Um, you can actually change color of parts of your equation. You can change the color of all of your equations. For example, if you're in PowerPoint and you want all of your equations to be yellow against a blue background, you can do that kind of stuff. And really, you just have to know that this stuff is here and then start to play with it. Um, and if there's ever anything you can't figure out how to do, you're always welcome to stop by and, um, and ask about it. So, you are now a expert math type user, and I hope you've enjoyed our series of lessons and um, learned something from it. Have a great day.